Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as this is a Monday podcast episode where we focus on a particular astrological topic or theme. And in today's episode, we're going to look at the energetics of Chiron in Aries stationing direct on December 26th, 2023 at 15 degrees of Aries. This means that Chiron is now passing that threshold through the middle of the Aries astrological journey where it first entered Aries back in 2018 and is now moving into the second half of the Aries energies and degree points. Chiron is an important energy to understand because it brings us into more of our own humanity, brings us into more of our vulnerabilities. It allows us to access more of our authentic frequency, more of our internal self and our true self, especially in Aries. So we'll be talking about this energy today, which is really important, especially if you have planets or points in Aries because it signifies that those Aries energies are on a healing journey. They are being transformed. You have been required to look at certain parts of your energy to go into maybe some things you didn't want to see. You didn't want to take the time to stop and even notice. And that's because the Aries energy is about forward motion. It's about speed. It's like, let's get going. Let's start the adventure. Let's do something fun. It can be quite impulsive. It's where we feel what's calling to us and we just want to go for it. We just want to dive off into the experience and see what unfolds. Aries being the first sign of the zodiac is not only about initiations, but it's also connected to our body and our physical selves. It's how we connect to who I am in this lifetime, my self-identity, how I describe myself, how I know myself, and also what it means to be me in the world and how that alone can be an evolving journey. Now, since 2018, Chiron and Aries has been rewiring and reworking those Aries energies in your chart and has been perhaps bringing up things that have felt very emotional, very difficult, parts of your life that you maybe had to let go of that were built into your self-identity, how you would describe yourself or know yourself. Typically, the Chiron energy also will highlight significant life changes that you've had up to a certain point in your journey, but they're not meant to continue on with you. You're meant to release it. You're meant to let it go, but it can be quite painful, quite vulnerable. There can be energies here that bring you into your emotional fears, your emotional wounds. It can bring up past trauma, abuse, or energies within yourself you have haven't really healed or fully looked at. Chiron is also where we need support. You need someone else to help you through a hard phase or a vulnerable spot. The Chiron energy brings up also where we're meant to see things in a new light, in a new way. And that's part of the Chiron healing journey where we can be on what we would call a very mainstream path. Well, Chiron is about alternative healing. Chiron is not about the status quo or what everyone's doing. Chiron is about what is correct for me and I have to go off in a different direction to discover that, to venture into that territory, to be confident and courageous enough to do so. And the Aries energy has that. The Aries energy is strong in doing its own thing. And so with Chiron, you could even feel like, yes, I have to look at this in myself. I have to know this part of my energy and understand the deeper internal workings and what's going on. So as Chiron stations direct on December 26th at 15 degrees of Aries, you could feel a renewal. You could feel that you're coming into peace with yourself, peace with your journey. And truthfully, that isn't something that Aries energy always moves towards or accesses because it's a very dynamic forward moving desire here. And so for Aries to stop 
and to really feel a peace with self, to accept all of who you are that you've discovered through the Chiron experience brings you into a whole new level of self-knowingness and also can show you how your sense of self has been shifting and evolving and even how you've had to really face some things that have been uncomfortable, but Chiron stationing direct brings in more of that self-acceptance. Just really accepting, this is my path right now. This is what I've been through. This has perhaps what's defined me. And also, this is what I've let go of. This is what I've released that no longer either has access to me, no longer defines me, is no longer connected to my sense of self. So as Chiron stations direct, you could have something rising up in you that also gives you a beautiful affirmation of who you are now. And even though Chiron can be quite bumpy, in fact, it often can be the energy that pulls us into the wound. And that can feel so vulnerable. There can be a lot of tears and insecurities. It brings up bigger life questions. What do I do now? What do I do next? Who am I now? And then begins that Aries journey of discovering, yeah, who am I now? Let me go into that. Let me explore that. Let me see what is my truth. Now, to go a bit more into the Chiron archetypal energies, Chiron was a centaur who was ostracized from the other centaurs. And Chiron was forced out of a fellowship, a brotherhood of other family members. In fact, he was abandoned by his family and raised by Apollo in Greek mythology. And his life experiences, especially at an early age of being abandoned by his true parents, helps establish the understanding of this energy, where this is important to understand how you could have felt abandoned by something, someone. You could have felt ostracized, unwelcomed, different than. And that's important with Chiron is that it actually highlights how you're different and how you actively resolve and accept that within yourself. How your energy isn't connected to perhaps a collective or the group. How you could feel like a misfit. Where do I go? How am I connected to these people? Where do I fit in? So Chiron was ostracized and this turned out to be a beautiful gift for him where he directed his time, energy, and attention into noble pursuits, into medicine, into healing, into his own personal interests that basically gave him life and gave him a purpose. He became quite dedicated to his passion for alternative medicine and eventually he became sought out for his wisdom, teachings, and understanding about organic naturopathic medicines, about alternative understandings of working with the forest, working with nature. He was able to focus in on how various things in our environment could help support us and heal us. He was able to basically create a powerful niche for himself on his expertise. In fact, his temperament was known for being kinder, more gentle, more humane than the other centaurs who could be quite disruptive, reckless, have argumentative tempers, and go to more extremes. Chiron was able to tap into more of his natural gifts and talents because ultimately being ostracized, being pushed away was an invitation into himself. So we take that understanding, we apply it to Chiron energies in our lives and in our experiences and say, okay, this is an invitation into who I am in Aries. This is where I meant to circle back into understanding who I am now at this point in my life, not who I thought I had to be, not what I had to demonstrate I was good at, because that Aries energy can be determined to prove I'm the best, prove I'm number one. It can be the energy too, where you have this built in unconscious desire to always exceed, always go first, always be number one. And yes, that can be beautiful for what it manifests and what you learn about yourself. But Chiron and Aries brings you back to your self leadership, tapping into more of your soul gifts, tapping in to where you need or really only require validation from yourself. 
and you're saying, you know, this is how I know how good I am or what I'm good at. This is where I actually don't have to prove anything. I don't need to be competitive. I don't need to argue to the point of exhaustion. I don't have to go to war or go to battle to demonstrate my capabilities or how strong I am. Rather, I can relax into a truth where all I'm trying to do is be better today than I was yesterday or I want to live my life in a new way that resonates with me deeply, or I just want to be the best I can be on my terms without anyone else having the power to determine if it's good enough or if it's the best or if I'm doing my best. Rather, I know my energy. I know what I'm capable of, and that's what I'm trusting even more. The Chiron energy brings up our wounds. It can bring up both the physical wounds and the emotional wounds. Oftentimes it brings up both where you can have a physical injury with Chiron and Aries, especially since Aries is about the physical body. You can have an injury that requires you to go on a healing journey. And if that's the case, we know that the body heals on its own timeline. It can't be rushed, which can be very difficult for Aries because that impatience comes in and you want to be back at 100% tomorrow, but instead you have to wait 10 months or a year and a half for whatever the body needs to recover. Then there can also be the emotional wounds, the emotional pain that comes up where something happens that is really life-changing or hurtful painful. Maybe it brings up something from childhood or that you had buried or repressed. It can even bring up themes from multiple lifetimes. And so here this Chiron in Aries is inviting you into yourself in a new way, inviting you to see yourself through different lenses of strength. Know that slowing down, trusting the timing, and going with the flow is also a strength, even though the Aries energy isn't typically tapped into that. The Aries energy, again, it's like, let's go. I want to be there. Let's have fun. Let's get it done. This is a slowdown. And depending on your chart, of course, if Chiron and Aries has been working with you in multiple ways, you would be feeling this in multiple areas of your life. That's what tends to come up with Chiron transits. So Chiron in Aries is working directly with your planets or points in Aries, but it's also working with planets or points in Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. And that means there is a reprogramming of your frequency through that Aries intention of knowing yourself in a new way. Now, If you have planets or points in Cancer, Chiron and Aries has been squaring that, perhaps bringing up childhood wounds, emotional healing opportunities, looking at dynamics from when you were younger. It can also really pinpoint sensitivities where you realize that you're hypersensitive to something or maybe hyper defensive because that Cancer energy is actually okay going into where things feel vulnerable and raw, but it does so in a private way. It doesn't want it to be out there. It doesn't want everyone to know. So there could be more of a personal internal journey that those cancer energies are moving through if you've had a square from Chiron and Aries. Now, if there's an opposition to your planets or points in Libra, from Chiron and Aries, then that's where you're looking at relationship dynamics, giving and receiving. And you could have some realizations that are hard to arrive at. You could realize, wow, this isn't the partner for me. This isn't the path for me. This isn't the dynamic. These aren't the people for me. You could see where you have held yourself back in order to please others, where you haven't been in your full power. And Chiron and Aries wants you to know that your needs are valid. What you need from others is just as important as what they need from you. And so you could be struggling or figuring out how do I rebalance these connections? And at the same time, there can be endings. There can be people leaving your life as Chiron opposes those planets or points in Libra because they've served their time, so to speak, in on your journey. I mean, not in prison. They've served their time in helping you learn more about yourself. And with those Libra planets, it can be a mirror. You could be experiencing something mirrored back to you. 
that you need to claim, you need to be more courageous, you need to stand on your own in a whole new way. Almost like a significant relationship ends and you're single for the first time and you don't know how to be single or you've been in a lot of relationships and you're single and figuring out what that means to you now. If Chiron in Aries is squaring your planets or points in Capricorn, This brings up not only what you do professionally, but there could be issues in the workplace. There could be things going on with mentors or at work in your professional arena that really feel like they're getting to you in terms of what you know you're qualified to do, what you can handle, your level of commitment, expertise, responsibility. But here comes this Chiron in Aries that squares those planets or points in Capricorn. And you could be really assessing, is this what I want to keep doing? Even though you've put in time, energy, and effort, even though you've been on this path for a while, there could be things coming up here where you're seeing yourself differently and you're having to sit with some big choices about where you're going to go next or what is calling to you. Of course, keep in mind, these are just brief overviews of the energy, just a bigger understanding of how they can show up. Now, the Chiron in Aries is also helping us regroup into our independence, to be strong on your own terms, to do something on your own. And depending on your chart, that might be natural for you, that could be normal, or it could be something that you're terrified of. You're terrified of it. Chiron stationing direct, again, the end of December, there's something here you've learned about yourself throughout this past year of what you can handle, what you're capable of, that you're safe to do it on your own. You're safe to trust yourself. And Chiron in Aries is deeply connected to our root chakra, our primal energies, how we go into perhaps fight or flight, how we go into survival mode. And looking at the primal programming around being yourself in the world and do you truly feel grounded and deeply connected into the energy on the planet that supports you, that wants you to be strong, that wants you to be connected to who you are. And so the Chiron and Aries energy can involve a lot of root chakra healing where you're realizing, okay, I don't have to fight for this. Or maybe when I do fight for this, I feel exhausted. It's not serving my energy. It's not how I want to do it. How can I do this differently? There can be things that come up around anger, frustration, or your temper. That could be part of what you're looking at with Chiron and Aries. You could be understanding how can I feel and work with this energy differently, more consciously? What can I do to calm down those immediate responses or those outbursts that I'm realizing are quite damaging? What can I do here to be more grounded, centered, and powerful in my energy so that I don't feel like I have to respond to everything or that I'm not living amongst all these big energies that require my constant ongoing response? Because of the immediacy of Aries, it could almost feel like everything's a fire drill, right? Everything happens quickly. I've got to do this right away. You live life at a faster pace. But Chiron in Aries is slowing that down, slowing it down so that you can be more intentional and more conscious of how your energy is operating, how it's running through you and how you are in control of it rather than that root chakra or that primal programming overtaking you and realizing it's exhausting. I don't want to do this anymore. That part of my energy is coming to an end so that I can rise up and respond or be present to others in a whole new way. So yes, this can be something where you address anger issues, especially when you notice the pattern, the pattern in the dynamics, the pattern of what comes up for you. And if it's something you feel in your body or if it originates in your mind, if it's energy you're feeling that you have to respond to, Of course, so many ways this can show up across a full spectrum of expressions. But Chiron stationing direct in Aries means you've learned some things, especially since Chiron stationed retrograde back in July. It was July 23rd at 19 degrees, 58 minutes of Aries and travels back to 15 degrees, 27 minutes of Aries. Keep in mind that Chiron is not going to cover 
these degree points again. So Chiron now moves ahead and in 2024 gets to 23 degrees of Aries. In 2024, Chiron will move back and forth between 19 and 23 degrees of Aries. Now, some other things to note here as we move forward. Chiron is going to be conjunct the North Node in Aries at 16 degrees in February, the middle of February, in fact, about February 11th to February 25th. And when Chiron is conjunct the North Node, this is a new beginning a fresh start, something uplifting coming through, something that supports your healing. So look at where you chart, because as the North Node comes across this point, syncs up with Chiron, something comes through to validate you. It shows you what you've been working on, reprogramming and healing is worth it. There could be something that also feels like it has your name on it. That like, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. This is what I need. This is good for me. This is supporting me moving forward in this new self-knowledge and in this new self-identity that I've been working with. Of course, it's the most personal for you if you have planets or points at 16 degrees of Aries. That's where the energy is the strongest. And that's where the support shows up and reveals itself. Then as we move into April 2024, we're going to have an eclipse on Chiron at exactly 19 degrees. Exactly 19 degrees, the sun and the moon. And this can show up through multiple experiences, of course. It could be a crisis For some people, it could be a collective wound. It could be something traumatic or big happening. It can also be, depending on your personal energy, incredibly healing. It can be something that supports you and that validates the newness you've committed to. Because it's a solar eclipse, it's new energy. It's a new starting point at 19 degrees of Aries in your chart. So again, if you have planets or points there, there's something coming through that's opening you up into a new cycle of self-knowingness. So this Chiron is going to be active here, especially in February and April. And it's showing us more of who we are as individuals, how we're capable of doing things on our own terms in our own way. It's also assisting us in moving forward in our lives. Now, I also wanted to mention that if you have planets or points in Leo, then this Chiron in Aries is trining those creative sparks and you could have a refresh of energy coming in, new inspirations to play with or to work with, new things coming through that you want to try or that you want to go towards. So the trines to planets in Leo can be quite invigorating. The same is true for any planets or points in Sagittarius. So if you have this Chiron trining any planets in Sag, then you could feel something that you want to move towards and do. You could be opening up to new ways of viewing yourself, new belief systems, new things that deeply resonate with who you are. And again, it's a new chapter, a fresh page of your journey. And that Chiron trine to planets in Sag help you connect to doing something new or trying it in a different way. So those are supportive energies. And then if you have planets or points in Gemini, then Chiron and Aries can be sextiling them, which is supportive and flow, which opens up new things to consider, to think about, perhaps new interests, new studies, new things you want to learn. If you have planets or points in Aquarius, then Chiron and Aries is directing you into more ways of knowing yourself, understanding who you are, your unique gifts, what you can contribute, what you can offer, and even bringing in new life to those visions or to those ideas that you've been pondering or thinking through. 
So Chiron and Aries stationing direct, again, is giving us a minute to just take a beat, take a pause. Look at how far you've come. Look at what you've healed and you've moved through. Look at what you've had to face that could have been wildly uncomfortable and incredibly vulnerable. It could have stirred up a lot of emotions, a lot of tears. You could feel like that's what you're releasing. That's what you are reprogramming. You could feel too like, where you've previously had fears, now you have more confidence. Now you're not so afraid of going off in a new direction or trying something you haven't done before. With Aries being the astrology sign of initiation, we're being invited to initiate new frequencies into ourselves, to trust it, to just trust where the energy is speaking to you, where you feel energized or motivated, and to know that that is also perhaps where Chiron is signaling, you're good to go. You're ready for this. Let's see what happens. Let's look at what can unfold when you just trust yourself, trust the energy, and know that no matter what unfolds, you will be supported in yourself because you know yourself more. But part of the wisdom of Chiron is acknowledging your own Achilles heel, your own tender spots, understanding that, okay, I understand this is where I still feel weak. This is where I need to be mindful. And that when I get a boo-boo here, or when something feels like a poison arrow to my heart or to my solar plexus or to whatever, what is my process for healing? How do I honor my own healing as I go out into the world and maybe you get those arrows or those daggers or maybe something does feel like it taps into your insecurity. One thing about Chiron is that the energies are never fully healed. They're never back to 100%. Think about when you break a bone or you have an injury. Yes, the body heals itself and it takes that time and recovery process, but it's never 100%, right? It's never how it was previously. It's permanently changed. It can still be strong. You still have renewals that happen, especially with skin and cells and parts of our body that are made to regenerate, but it's never 100%. So you learn to navigate life in a new way. You learn from the injury. You learn from the pain. You learn from the process or what you've been through. So you can say, okay, if I twist my ankle again, I understand that it's going to hurt. And it's going to suck. And maybe I have to sit on the couch for a bit, let it heal. But now I'm going to be more patient, kind, and loving to myself. Now I understand what I can control and what I cannot. I can also have more compassion for myself, for my body, for my needs. And so Chiron and Aries unravels the ego, unravels the expectations of self or what it has to be. It also asks us to go into our own tenderness. To know that there are parts of us that are just fragile. They're just sensitive. There's things that are going to hurt, whether those are sticks and stones or words or connections or something from outside of you, right? Other people, whether it's something that occurs through an injury, whether it's something that happens in the workplace and so on and so on, right? There can be various things that can get to you more personally, And with this Chiron and Aries, we're learning to just accept ourselves as we are in the present moment, in this heartbeat, to know that you're doing the best you can, working with the circumstances as they are, and you're also trusting that the universe is working with you, you're trusting the healing, and you're trusting what you're feeling. So even though those wounds can be tender and highly sensitive, now you know that about yourself. You know that, okay, when someone says this or someone does that and it hurts, it hurts my heart, it's mean, it's an attack, it's personal, you can then say, I know how to move through this. I'll take a breath. Maybe you go sit and you cry in the car. Then you gather yourself together, wipe off any of those raccoon mascara stains, Feel a strengthening in your spine, head up, chin up, you re-enter the game. You come back into the life experiences that you're meant to move through. 
So with Chiron, we work with our own humanity. We work with our vulnerabilities. We become masters at it. And it's by doing that. It's by stepping into more of your own healing process that you're able to relate to people in a whole new way. So Chiron and Aries, maybe it takes away people who were connected to a previous version of yourself, but it will bring in people who are connected to more of this healed version of yourself, to your new authentic frequency, to new parts of your truth. It will bring in people that you can have different kinds of conversations with. And perhaps that's what you notice as well. You're like, wow, I'm sharing things about my journey that I never would have talked about with those previous friends or those previous people I knew. And that's the Chiron energy in play where you're more open, you're more confident in all of your energy energy, whether you thought it was a vulnerability or something you had to hide. Now you're like, yes, this is just part of my journey, what I've been through. And chances are it's highly relatable. It can be something that brings in or calls in new connections, new people, new colleagues, even new groups of people that are at that same frequency that allow you to be yourself. More of yourself than you ever knew you were. So that's what I basically want to leave you with here as we close out this episode is that Chiron stationing direct and moving forward into the second half of Aries is going to help in supporting your self-acceptance of who you are now in ways that you never knew you were. Chiron changes us personally, which then affects not only our emotional selves, our body, our aura, our mind. It changes the energies we experience and what we have come to understand about how lovable we are with these scars, these injuries, these warts, these vulnerabilities, all of the beauty of those things make us even more powerful in our human journey. Now, I previously have done separate podcast episodes talking about Chiron and Aries. So be sure and check them out on my YouTube channel. You can simply search for them on my YouTube channel or on YouTube. And perhaps those will also help you connect with some of the themes you've been moving through, especially if transiting Chiron and Aries has been significant in your chart and one of the bigger transiting energies you've experienced in recent years. So I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday with a new podcast episode. You can find all of my current astrology courses and programs at mollymccord.online. If you are looking to go into your chart more to understand more about your astrological energy signature, whether that is your Chiron or any other planets, I hope that this helps you connect to the wisdom you hold in this lifetime. And that is one of the best gifts of astrology is that we become more self-aware. We step into more of our power and our light and we're able to make more conscious choices when we know who we truly are. As always, thank you so much for joining me, wishing you a beautiful journey here as these energies move forward and I will be back to connect with you again soon.